Hi, my name is Daniel, and I'm going to show you some tips and recommendations to make your OpenScope 3D printing case a final product. Some of the supplies that you would need is just a regular razor blade and a file tool that comes in these little packages. This one is a round one that you can actually get into the buttons and the light pipe feature. Simple flat screwdriver. And for the actual bed, you can use either a glue stick or just a regular hairspray. A few recommendations for 3D printer settings is to have a glass bed. That way you can have a mirror finish of the top and the bottom surface. And so you actually want to be printed on the orientation where the faces are printing downward. So there's no support material needed. And when you're actually setting up in a slicer software, depending on what you have, you want to make sure that the nozzle is no greater than 0.4 millimeters in diameter. That way you can actually print out all of the features that you need, for example, the logo and actual the locking mechanism cylinders inside the case. That way you can actually have a secure case. And depending on the software you have, you can actually adjust these settings. And with Simplify 3D, these are the recommended settings that we use that has best results. So a couple things that you can encounter is elephant feet on the edges of the printed parts. And so this could affect the button functionality when you actually press it down. So using a razor blade, you can trim the edges around the actual button and that should be able to fix the issue if you have that problem. Using a round file, you go around scraping around these buttons that can clean up any of the oozing from the 3D printer. So that cleaning up, you insert it into this mechanism here and there's only one way that you can insert it in and you twist it and it's locked inside there. And so that doesn't allow it to come out whenever you pull out the case from the top. So with the bottom case, this is a bad example when it comes out when there's lots of oozing and stuff like that, but this all needs to be cleaned up, especially around these walls. These walls right here is the locking mechanism for the actual PCB, since the farther you push it down, the tighter it actually gets. Prior to putting the PCB into the actual case, you can use these rubber feet put them on the bottom of the actual case so that they don't slide on tabletops or anything like that. And there's actually small little circular outlines where to place the rubber feet. When inserting the open scope into the bottom case, you want to press it down completely until you cannot hear any more clicks. Be sure to press on where there's no components. So you just keep pushing on the four corners until you can't hear it anymore. You know that the four standouts on the bottom are touching the PCB. However, if you do need to remove the actual PCB, there are two little notches right here that you can use and that you just use a flat screwdriver to pop it out. We also have notches on each side. Press a flat screwdriver in there, twist, and you'll be able to pop it off. So when you actually 3D print your case, you have three options basically for light pipes. The first one is to not include anything. And when you actually insert that, you still have a great finish. However, we recommend to use the light pipes just because you'll be able to see the light from all angles. And the last option is to actually use hot glue gun and make your own light pipes. So in this case, you want to make sure that you use a thin nozzle and you press it down from the bottom Try not to press too hard or you're going to deform the light pipe clearance, but you press it down in there and you start injecting the actual glue Oops. <laughs> until it pops out. You might want to have experience with the hot glue gun as you can see, but let's try it again. There we go. 